Hey everybody, welcome back to Blue Collar Homestead. Today's video, we're going to do something a little different. I always say that, don't I? But it's always different. <clears throat> um, I did a bunch of landscaping and stuff out in front of the house. I got some landscape timbers in. I built a, a new front porch and that kind of stuff. And now I'm going to build these flower boxes, which I've got them pretty much built. But the finish on them, I want to do a crackle paint to have it look something like this. I don't know how well that's going to pick, the camera's going to pick that up, but it looks better in person, I think, than it does on the camera. But let's see if we can get this to take a better look. But you can see how the paint's all cracked. You can see the maroon bleeding through in the back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get that finish. I mean, they sell a crackle paint, but man, it is expensive. This stuff is a much easier process, and it's it's not my invention by any means. I've seen it somewhere else too, but uh, it does work. So basically what you're going to do is uh, get your base color. So what we're going to do, this is the outside of the flower box. I'm going to paint this maroon. And then after that, I'm going to put some of this. This is Elmer's, Elmer's washable clear glue. That's all this is. And I don't know if the other stuff works. This is just what I had laying around. I got a couple bottles of this. So I'm going to paint this red, and I'm going to smear this glue on it. Let it get a little bit tacky, I guess. Then I'm going to cover this thing in white paint. Then I'm going to hit it with the heat gun, and it's going to separate and cause the split. So let me get this painted, and then, uh, you know, we'll get the glue on it. I'll show you how much glue to put on, and then we'll get the paint on it, and we'll see how it goes now. This is the first time I'm actually doing this on this scale. I've just tried it on this little sample piece to see how it would come out before I do this and screw up the entire finish and have to build a new one. I don't want to do that either. But So let me get this painted red and I will come right back when I go to put the glue on and the other paint and then we'll hit it with the heat gun and hopefully you'll be able to you know see what's going on here and see how well it works. Hopefully it turns out all right. Like I said, I've never done this on this scale and this is a small one. The other one I got to do is about, that's about five feet long. So let me get these two painted and we'll be right back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this clear Elmer's glue all over this thing. But before we do that, let me kind of go over with you what's going to happen here. I mean, obviously, I showed you once before, this is the finish we're going for. But these flower boxes are not going to have real flowers in them at all. That's just too much work for me. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to I have this treated 2x4. These are all fake flowers. This is going to get screwed to the brick, and it's going to sit up just like that. There's other little pieces of grass that go in here that aren't here yet. But, yeah, so low maintenance. This should last me a bunch of years. Let me set this over here. But to give you an idea, there's another one. This is kind of what it's going to look like. This is a five footer. It's about five feet long so for a double end up. But that is what we're going to do. I don't usually plant flowers. I don't plant anything. Usually, well, don't plant anything I can't eat. Usually, if I'm going to plant something, it's got to be something I can eat. And let's face it, these are about seven feet off the ground i don't want to have to deal with them plus you got the the overhang of the roof coming over it so water would be a nightmare and you got mold problems and rot problems and everything else so it's better off just put the fake flowers and i'm done with it for a couple of years to last and that'll be that so let me get the camera position we're going to put some glue on here and then uh we're going to see how this goes all right <clears throat> i'm going to take this little uh sponge guy i'm going to take this glue i'm just going to kind of dump it like this I'm just going to spread it around and cover the entire thing in this glue. And then we're going to let it set up for ah, 10 or 15 minutes. Not You don't want it to get all the way dry. You know, so this is going to be uh, how that goes. Let me get these edges. And then we're going to go over this with the white paint. And then we're going to hit it with the heat gun. And everybody's going to see how this works. So, the, uh, all right, let's spread this out real good. I 
Now, obviously, I'm not doing these edges like here. No one's ever going to see that. So, all right, that's it for that. So we're going to let this dry for about ah, five or five to ten minutes, depending on how tacky it gets. And then we'll be back and we'll throw some paint on it. Now what I'm going to do is I put some paint in this uh, old container here. I'm using a cheap brush. Don't want to use a good brush on this. And I'm just going to cover this, you know, the best I can. I'm not going to get it 100% perfect because this is not supposed to be perfect. So I'm going to lather the paint on here. Kind of get these holes filled in with some covered up. All right. Now, I definitely don't recommend doing this and getting the paint right out of the can because right now this glue is probably mixing with the paint as I'm putting it on because the glue is, it's not 100% cured and I don't want to mess up an entire gallon of paint for this little project. So we are going to just put it in that little container that I showed you and when I'm done I'll just throw whatever's left out because... I don't want to mess up. Like I said, there's still a lot of paint left in that can, and I don't want to mess it up. The last thing I want is for this to be on the wall or on a piece of trim that I'm painting later. You know, it's something else because, let's face it, we all save our paint and do other things with it later. Other projects and whatnot. So, I'm going to do this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me get the edges painted somewhat. I'm going to paint the edges. Like I said, the edges I'm not worried about putting glue on because obviously it's the edge. It's not, I'm not that concerned about what the edge looks like, if it has a crackle on it or not. But in the top, let's face it, nobody's ever going to see the top. These things are going to be seven feet off the ground. So, all right. Get this edge. These are not supposed to be a perfect paint job. You're going for a worn out, weathered look i guess so i said it's not supposed to be perfect if you want perfect this is not the process to do it all right, all right that's that now let's get out the heat gun and see what this does see how this is going to split you want to keep your heat gun moving. You don't want to keep it in the same area because you'll bubble the paint and then you'll have real problems. Let's see if we need to just get it right in here. Oh, right, you can see it's starting to happen. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty good already. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but It's starting to have that weathered look. Wow, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, that looks, it's getting there. I said you want to keep your heat gun moving, don't stop. If you stop, you're going to have, you're going to have issues. I'm going to get this end over here a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's getting there. It's doing its thing, doing what it's supposed to do. It's kind of coming out how we wanted it. You can see this end over here is not quite done yet, so we're going to uh, work on this side. Now, after this is done, I'll probably end up putting a uh, some kind of a clear coat on it to lock all this in because it's going to be outside in the rain and the weather. However, this is on the uh, side of the house that the weather doesn't hit you that hard very much, hardly ever. So, yeah, you can see how this is working. Wow, that looks really cool. Has a nice weathered look to it. Right, I'm going to hit the edges here. Oh, yeah, that, that's looking really good. Now i got to hit the other edge. I'm going to hit the other edge, and then we'll bring the camera back up, and I'll give you a shot of how it all came out 
But yeah, there's a drip right there. So I'll get that off there. Thank God the drip was on the edge. No one's gonna really see that. I think the more heat you apply, the more it's gonna crack, but you wanna keep your heat gun moving. Like I said, you leave it in one spot too long, the paint will start to bubble and you'll mess up the whole thing. All right, so you can kind of see the crackling. Like I said, I don't know if the, the camera is going to do this justice. It looks a lot better in person, but that's kind of the look you're going for. You can see the red coming through there. It's got that weathered look like the paint's peeling on it. Like I said, I'm probably going to cover this with a, a clear coat. I have a water-based uh, a water -based poly over there, I think, is uh, what I'm going to end up covering this with. Just to make sure the water doesn't get in here and start messing it up. It'll last a little bit longer, so... That is how we antique and make weathered looking wood, I guess. Like I said, the first time I'm trying this and it actually works pretty good. So we'll see how it holds up on the weather. And then, uh, like I said, I got another one that's about five feet long I got to do. And then we'll get these, we'll get to the part where we're going to install this stuff. But that's not going to be today. Today's really, really windy out and there's massive storms coming. So uh, now you can hear the, that's the garage door creaking in the background with the wind all over it. So I think... That's going to be it for today. Now, I totally forgot to uh, get a video of putting the clear coat on uh, the flower boxes and all that stuff. But I mean, I think you guys pretty much get it. It was just a, a clear coat of poly just to kind of lock everything in place to make sure it didn't fall off, I guess, or have water get in the cracks and wash it away or anything. But I did get it all put up. So let me uh, flip the camera around and show you exactly what I did and how they look. All right, so this is pretty much the finished product. You can see what's going on there. And you can see this two by four is screwed to the bricks here. Now, when I screwed this in, again, you just put the screws in and screw it into the mortar line, not into the brick. If you screw it into the brick, you're gonna have issues. So that's how this is mounted. This is screwed right into the brick, into the mortar line, not into the brick. Now this, Mounting on the other hand, I don't know if you can see, like, it's kind of hard to see, but there's screws right here. I put screws going in on an angle to catch this from the back side so I didn't have these ugly screws going through the front. And you can see it's pretty solid. It's not going nowhere, so definitely uh, easy to do. I so said these flowers, I think we got from Amazon, these tulips, they're all fake. I, I'm not putting real flowers in there, but... Uh, there is this other stuff that's supposed to go in here that we ran out of. Let me go to the other window and show you what the other one looks like. All right, you can kind of see what's going on from the ground down here. This is what it's supposed to look like on the other side. But I'm waiting for more of this green stuff to show up. You can see how the finish on this one looks. It came out pretty good, actually. It looks really cool. It's different, it looks weathered, you know, but uh, see that's all up there. So you can see it came out pretty good. It was cheap, it was inexpensive. They're not real flowers, you never gotta water them. So these will probably last a couple of years and I'll have to buy new flowers, big deal. But uh, when it comes to planting things that are real, I usually only like to plant something I can eat. These are strictly for decor and that's about it. So. I think that's going to wrap up this video. So like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you on the next one.